When cations attract anions, we form an ionic bond. Many ionic bonds together form a three-dimensional ordered arrangement of ions called a crystal lattice. The charge difference between cations and anions make ionic bonds the strongest of all types of bonds. We have a term called lattice energy, which indicates the strength of an ionic bond. In ionic bonding, electrons are transferred from a metal to a nonmetal. This slide shows a few visualizations of that process. In the Lewis dot structure visualization, we transfer a dot from lithium to fluorine to form lithium fluoride. A more detailed view, shown in the gray box, shows that lithium's 2s electron is transferred to fluorine's 2p subshell, leading both species to have full outermost shells. Pretty simple, right? Well, maybe not. Let's take a closer look. Remember in section 7.4 and 7.5, we defined two terms that make ions, ionization energy and electron affinity. Metallic elements like lithium have low ionization energies, meaning they do not hold very tightly to their outermost electrons. Greedy nonmetal elements like fluorine have large negative electron affinities, meaning that they badly want to steal an electron from somewhere else. This simple description from the last slide would say that fluorine's desire for another electron is stronger than how much lithium is holding on to its last valence electron. But do the numbers add up? Lithium's ionization energy is 520 kilojoules per mole. It is a positive number because removing an electron from a neutral atom is always an endothermic process. This number represents how strongly lithium holds on to its valence electron. Fluorine's electron affinity is negative 328 kilojoules per mole, meaning fluorine will put 328 kilojoules of energy into securing another electron. However, fluorine's electron affinity is less than lithium's ionization energy. In other words, fluorine does not want an extra electron more than lithium wants to keep its electron. If we take this to its logical extreme, we would conclude that ionic bonding is impossible because the electron affinity of nonmetals cannot overcome the ionization energy of metals. But come on, Brandon, don't be ridiculous. Lithium fluoride is a real compound and one of many stable ionic compounds. In reality, there's a little more going on. We'll have to grow our understanding of ionic bonding. Here's what's really going on. Humans have separated the process of ionic bonding into five steps. And so far, I've only revealed two of them to you, ionization of the metal and electron affinity of the nonmetal. We call the five-step process the Born-Haber cycle, named after German physicist Max Born and German war criminal Fritz Haber. I've put each of the five steps in their own row of this table and we'll chalk through them one by one. Chemicals cannot react when they are a solid. Lithium is naturally a solid, so the first step in the Born-Haber cycle is to vaporize lithium, which takes an amount of energy equal to lithium's enthalpy of vaporization. The next step is the one we're familiar with. We ionize lithium by removing an electron. This forms lithium ion and a free electron and takes the amount of energy indicated by lithium's ionization energy. Lithium is now ready to form an ionic bond. Our next two steps involve fluorine. First, we have to break the covalent bond between the F2 molecule. This takes energy equal to half the F2 bond energy. Notice that each of these steps above takes energy. They're endothermic. It requires energy to vaporize lithium. It requires energy to ionize lithium. And it requires energy to break a covalent bond. These first three steps represent a sort of investment of energy, which we hope pays off in the last two steps. The fourth step is to add the free electron to fluorine, which has an enthalpy associated with fluorine's electron affinity and is moderately exothermic. And the last step is where we get our money back. 
in the last step, we have a positive cation and a negative anion attracting each other and forming an ionic compound called lithium fluoride. The most stable state of an ionic compound is called a crystal lattice. So the energy of the final step is referred to as the lattice energy. The last two steps are very exothermic and usually more than enough to make up for the endothermicity of the first three steps. Thus, formation of an ionic compound is a favorable exothermic process. This diagram places each of the five steps onto an energy level diagram. After I color code each step, we can see that the first three steps are moderately endothermic and the last two steps are exothermic especially the formation of the ionic bond, which is enormously exothermic. The black line represents the overall reaction enthalpy, or according to Hess's law, the reaction enthalpy is the sum of the reaction enthalpies of each of these five steps, and we see that it is an exothermic reaction. The lattice energy is a good measure of the strength of the ionic bond. Specifically, the lattice energy is the energy required to fully separate the cation and anion of an ionic compound. Lattice energy is affected by ion charge and ion size. As ion charge increases, lattice energy greatly increases. As ion size increases, lattice energy decreases. Both of these trends can be explained by Coulomb's law of electrostatic attraction. The ion charges are multiplied together on the numerator, so ions with twice the charge pull on each other with four times the force. The distance between charges is on the denominator. Large ions have a larger separation between charges and a correspondingly lower lattice energy. This means that lattice energy decreases as we go down a row, as shown in the graph on the right. Time for a practice. Rank these compounds by decreasing lattice energy. To answer this question, we need to keep in mind the two things affecting lattice energy. First and most importantly is the ion charge. With larger charges, <clears throat> with larger charges indicating much stronger lattice energies. The tiebreaker is ionic size with smaller ions indicating stronger lattice energies because the charges can get closer together. You won't be able to answer this question without looking at the periodic table. You may have noticed that half of the ionic compounds listed involved two plus and two minus charges and the other half involved a one minus and a one plus charge. The larger charges will have strong lattice energies so they are placed first. To break up the three-way tie in each of these categories, we look at the size of the ions. Larger ions are situated further down on the table and have lower lattice energies. Arranging our compounds according to these two rules, we get the order shown here. The smallest and highest charge ions have the greatest lattice energy and the largest and lowest charge ions have the smallest lattice energy. <clears throat> 